Cool. I feel like we've got a, a good quorum here, right? Yeah, let's go. I'll, I'll go on mute, Alice. All yours. Amazing. Welcome, everybody. My name is Alice Chin, and I'm the New York City chapter leader for Softland Partners. We're so thrilled to have all of you here with us today. We like to start our meetings to give everyone a chance to get to know each other. And so we're going to go around. I will read your name as it's listed because I'm, I'm, I don't know everybody's name. So if I'm going to call you something funny, you can change your name. Uh, before I get to you. And what we'll ask is that you do a 30 second intro and try to actually keep it to 30 seconds. Uh, tell us your name, what you do, and who you are looking to meet. We're really looking to make this a rich community where everyone gets to know each other well and gets to know how to think of helping each other. And so that's how we like to start. So we will go around the room. I'm gonna just go as you're displayed on my screen, which is probably how you joined. And uh, after we're done, I'll do a little intro about me as a chapter leader, and then we'll transition to Bill, who will tell us a little bit more about Soft Landing Partners as a whole. All right, Joan, can you get us started? Hey, hi everyone. Thanks, I'm calling in from Greater Boston to meet uh, the New York folks. Um, I am the executive director of Action Innovation Network, and we're a nonprofit member organization of technology business incubators in the New England region. And there are 16 tech incubators that are part of our network. Um, we, the, the tech incubators are supporting startup companies building technologies in the areas of the life sciences, clean tech, robotics, advanced materials, and ocean and maritime. Um, there's over 360 at the last count of companies within the incubators. Uh, but as part of our programs through an EDA grant that we received, we are putting on programs to support international startups who are looking at US market entry opportunities into the region in any of those industry sectors. Um, and so we have a soft landing program or what I call a pre-landing program that we are in the process of converting to mostly remote um, with a deferred landing when we can open up to that. So I would like to meet anyone who um, is dealing with startups in those areas who are looking for connections into the uh, greater Boston innovation ecosystem or looking for incubation options. Amazing. Thanks so much, Joan. And we do build it already circulate an attendee list, but just to let you guys know, we will do that again after the meeting. So don't feel worried. You know, you can take notes about who people are, but you'll be getting everyone's contact information towards the end. All right, Jonathan, take us away. Hey guys, um, Jonathan Mills. Um, so I'm um, originally a New York, a, a, a real estate lawyer from London. My accent gives me away a touch. Um, I'm now I work for a firm called Osborne Clark, who are um, an international law firm, We've got 26 uh, offices around the world. And um, we've got uh, three representative offices in the US. I'm based out of Manhattan. My colleague, Tim Resendez, is also on the line. And uh, we work with US businesses on expanding, uh, growing and scaling outside of the US um, all variety of companies. My specialism is real estate and real estate tech, uh, but we cover all sectors and service lines. Um, companies that we're looking to meet will be companies with uh, either aspirations on uh, international growth and expansion from the US or companies with existing operations outside of the US who need our counsel uh, in in other countries. So we don't, offer, we don't uh, conduct any law in the US, but we... Um, we put together our US clients and contacts with uh, legal services outside of the US, usually within the Osborne Clark network. Amazing. Thanks, Jonathan. I'm just going to ask anybody who is not talking to mute. I know we have everybody's dealing with kids and pets and neighbors right now, but if you could do that so we can all hear, that would be fantastic. Jeffrey Cohen, you are up next. As a reminder, we're going around doing 30-second intros, your name, what you do, and who you'd like to meet. Jeffrey, I think you're muted still if you're talking. Okay. I'm working on it. All right. Uh, uh, thanks. Great to see you again. Uh, hello, everyone. Jeffrey Cohen, ImageWorks, um, just outside of Hartford, Connecticut, despite my background. Um, we are a digital marketing firm. 
and uh, we specialize in new and new to market companies. So uh, we can help them with their website. That's about 10 to 15% of what we do. Beyond that, it's how do we take that website and use it to generate inbound leads, connect with potential buyers, uh, support existing uh, campaigns. So we're the, um, we're the, you've got a new website, now what? We're the now what piece. And I'm looking for um, startups and companies who are new uh, soft landing. Amazing, thanks Jeffrey. All right, Amrit, you are up next. Hi everybody, uh, my name's Amrit Kang. Um, I work with an organization based in London called London and Partners. Um, I'm actually new to New York, um, so I, I moved here about five weeks ago, just in time um, for the lockdown. Um, so I'm actually looking to make friends and meet everybody right now. <laughs> so, um, you know, um, we help businesses um, from um, scale up stage to internationalize and my remit is to cover the whole of North America. Amazing. Thanks so much. Perfect. All right, Sylvie, you are up next. Hi, I'm Silva, Silva Parvian and, and um, I'm here with um, two hats, I would say. Um, one is that I, uh, I do business development for a company called Motorword. And Motorword is a, a human translation platform, um, a, a platform model for translations in a way that is not affected in any which way of the current situation. Uh, we work totally remotely in under normal circumstances. And, the, um, and that's something which is of course very, uh, pretty useful for people who do international trade or deal with international law or whatever. Uh, the other, uh, other hat that I have is that I have my own little company and I have worked in the, um, in the field of helping startups, especially Nordic startups to come to US for the past eight years or so in different roles Amazing. and that's also why I'm here to to learn more about you. Fantastic thank you Sylvie. All right Jackie you are up next. Hi everybody I'm Jackie Torsolini uh, owner of Global Growth Strategies and I'm an international business consultant uh, on the import side I help companies understand uh, regulations and rules for their products, as well as help with implementation on policies, procedures on the operational side. Awesome, thanks Jackie. All right, Jenny Norris is up next. I think we have another Jenny too. Hey Jenny. Hi, uh, many Jennies usually. Um, Jenny <laughs> Norris, I'm with Meridian Finance Group. We are a credit insurance broker. So what that means is if a company any company here in the United States is selling domestically or internationally and selling on open account terms, and they're worried about their customer not paying. Uh, we insure those receivables. It's kind of a hot topic right now. And um, many times companies that are subsidiaries of foreign companies that are doing business here are looking for that kind of service um, because their credit department may not be strong enough and they're worried about, again, companies not paying. So we are looking primarily for companies that are distributors, manufacturers, um, companies that are exporting. Um, so that's it, thank you. Thanks, Jenny. All right, Aziz is up next. Aziz, you're muted actually, I think still. Perfect, thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Aziz, I'm from Uzbekistan. Uh, I'm visiting faculty to Fairfield University, but at the same time, I'm the entrepreneur and we have businesses in Uzbekistan with my partner and we run a company called Global Trade and Investment. Uh, we, all, we started recently working with the bigger projects like uh, uh, real estate and working also import and export things. And we imported uh, many brands from the Euro European countries like uh, coffee uh, called Kalta Katrina from the Finland and the syrup from hung Hungary and many others. And we are also export 
uh, vegetables to European countries. And actually, we are looking for more broad projects, more broad partnership, uh, anything could, that would be interesting to both sides. Uh, uh, welcome, we are ready to join partnership. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks, Aziz. Hey, Lance. Off mute here. Um, hello, everyone. So I, my business is Alliance Technologies, and we focus uh, first and foremost on advanced manufacturing um, with a fractional share C-level management team where we are focused on either helping companies, international companies, get started here in America, or if they're already here, to help to redirect them with a very cost-effective, um, hands-on approach. And we have sort of a three-prong approach with the sort of startup angel investing side, foreign direct investment, and the legacy businesses that may be already here in the U.S. and looking for partnerships from around the world to accelerate growth through um, either acquisition or some sort of joint venture or, or partnership. So at the moment, I'm in a, uh, I think, a good position to be looking for people that can help me with this. I'm not necessarily looking for clients right now, a little bit overwhelmed at the moment. So really looking to build this network, which is what Bill's just done an incredible job um, pulling these people, pulling everyone together. So I'm looking for everything from knowledge on immigration, EB-5s to um, real estate, marketing, pretty much every aspect of it. So thank you, everyone. Super. Thanks so much, Lance. All right, Tim, you are up next. Tim Resendez. Thanks, Alice. Hi, good to be here. Uh, and thanks, Bill, for including me today. So Tim Resendez from Osborne Clark. So I'm Jonathan Mills's colleague. So the same law firm, primarily advising U.S. companies as they're expanding and growing outside the U.S. Uh, most of my practice for the past tw 12 years now is working with fast-growing companies, largely in the tech space, originally in Silicon Valley, now based in New York and covering kind of New York and Boston, the other tech hubs. Um, you've heard the pitch of what we do, but the flip side is we have a number of clients around the world that come into the U.S. market. Uh, myself and a few colleagues then are the ones that connect them to other advisors and help them come into the U.S. market. So we don't practice U.S. law. It's not a focus of our business, but we send a lot of referrals to other service providers in our network. So building out this network is a, a great idea and I uh, look forward to meeting all of you and, and finding ways to collaborate. Super, thanks, Tim. Mark Fielding, you are up next. Hi there, um, Mark Fielding. I was on the last um, happy hour that we had as well. Recognize a few of you, including Tim, although I'm not sure if Tim recognizes me. I've grown a quarantine beard since the last time we met. <laughs> Looking York. good, Mark. So that, thanks, thanks. <laughs> Try to emulate you. Um, it's actually what we do at Velocity Global, um, I'll, I'll explain very briefly, is act uh, like an Airbnb for corporate infrastructure. That is, we can employ our clients' employees on their behalf in markets in which they don't have their own corporate infrastructure yet. Uh, the main use case there is quick market entry, essentially, so allowing companies to get a foothold in the market from day one to start to develop those pipelines those channels, that momentum with regards to the sale of their product or service, um, after which typically they'll then spin off into their own entity. Um, and I'm looking to connect with parallel professional services providers for those companies making those first inroads into markets. Fantastic. Thanks, Mark. Shai, you are up next. Hi, everybody. It's great to be here and to see you guys virtually and to see so many people. I'm Shai. I'm the Acceleration Program Manager at Numa New York. We are um, a startup accelerator for international growth stage companies that are accelerating, that are scaling and expanding to the U.S. And right now, in addition to our traditional soft landing program, we are also uh, starting a virtual accelerator program. So if any of you uh, have any insights on, you know, taking your accelerator and making it remote, I would love to chat with you about it. Super, thanks Shai. David Berkowitz, you are up next. Great, and here then... with my CEO. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and she did ask me to share her name. This is Zella, right? Um, so yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> This is going to be a really productive intro. Uh, I'm Dave Burritz, and it's like getting 
as some version of getting it heckled and trying to run with it, right? Um, so uh, David Berkowitz got a marketing consultancy, serial marketer, uh, also run a, a, a uh, soon to be thousand member uh, marketing community based in Slack serial marketers that any friend of Bill's is more than welcome to join. Uh, and, uh, and, and long time NUMA mentor too, so, so big fan there. And so, so I've worked with a number of international companies, usually like right before or after Series A and kind of wind up being a marketer's marketer for those who are targeting brands and agencies in New York or more broadly the US. And um, so yeah, just thrilled to be part of this community, a big fan of what you're all doing and learning from you. Thanks, David. All right, Bill Keogh is up next. Hello. Good afternoon, yeah. Uh, in the uh, insurtech fintech world and work as an advisor to a, a number of companies and uh, also have a relationship with a company called Lockton Capital Markets, which does uh, M&A and raises capital for insurance technology companies. And uh, I'm just happy to be here. And uh, as Emirates said, I'm here to make friends and meet people. Fantastic. Thanks, Bill. All right, Ruth Steven. Next. I think you're muted still, Ruth. Can you unmute? Coming off mute. Great Perfect. to be one of your guests today. <clears throat> and I'm happy to see David Berkowitz in the audience. I'm a member of his fabled marketing community. I specialize in business to business marketing. And I've been a mentor at the ERA Accelerator in New York City for a while, helping foreign companies figure out go-to-market strategies in the US, and these are B2B companies, which is my area of specialization. So I've been really interested in the market entry concept and um, would like to be helpful to anybody who could, who could use my help. I'm also an adjunct professor at NYU Stern, and I teach a, a course called International Studies which is taught to the entire junior class in the spring of their junior year um, among the undergrads at Stern. And during the, the uh, course, we examine frameworks and strategies to figure out whether a firm can find profitable growth through foreign expansion. So I have an extra interest in what you all do as a, a connection with that course. So thanks again for welcoming me today. Amazing. Thanks, Ruth. All right, Sophie, you are up next. Hello, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I'm Sophie Lechner, um, uh, founder of uh, Global Commerce Education. I help companies outside the U.S. who want to enter the U.S. market. I help them with their market, strategy, market entry strategies, uh, finding the right professionals, um, vetting them, and uh, beginning the conversation uh, with them. And I help them with cultural differences and how to use that to adapt their message, uh, their products, if need be, um, and their business practices. So happy to participate in this community. Fantastic. Thanks, Sophie. All right. I see Phil Abdelvecchio next. It is me, Susan. <laughs> Susan, like, I was like, great. Did you know? Did you like tee that up? Um, thanks, Alice. I'm really happy to be here. Sorry I was late. I can't use the subway as an excuse this time around, so I guess I'll just say that <laughs> I was outside. Or something. Um, really great to be here. I'm excited to hear from everyone else. Um, my name is Philip, and uh, I'm the founder of a company called Hapte Group, and we focus on um, helping companies enter into the U.S. market in particular. Um, our core focus is helping a uh, uh, late seed series A uh, companies um, establish uh, market validation through sales and business development support. So we help them understand um, what their market is here in the US. We help them to build that traction and we help to, them to convert that traction. Um, we support in other ways as well. Um, we're mentors for a lot of accelerators in, in New York City, including NUMA. So it's cool to see Shai there. Um, and, uh, and really just excited to learn from everyone here because I think we all have a lot to learn from each other uh, navigating things right now. So thanks so much. Amazing, thanks, Philip. Hayden, you are up next. Hayden, I think you're still, there you go, perfect. 
Ooh, so you're unmuted, but we're still having trouble hearing you, Hayden, or at least I am. I don't know if anybody else can hear him. Are you able to hear me now? Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I had, I guess I have it going through my phone and my, and my laptop as well. <laughs> so hello everyone. My name is Hayden. I'm with the UK department for international trade. Uh, we do a lot of work on soft landing, both here in the U S and the UK. Uh, so our job, you know, coming from government is to support transatlantic business. We want to help U.S. firms first off uh, set up in the U.K., go through the whole process from start to finish. And oftentimes what that involves is us linking with, uh, you know, you guys, service providers, people who are already out there who provide soft landing services, and just knowing who's, who's out there, who we can send these companies to. And then on the same side, uh, helping U.K. companies that want to set up here in the U.S. as well, helping them get clients, meet with certain service providers, part, delivery partners, things like that. And then also advising them on the ground. Uh, we also do market, uh, market research and also do with market access barriers from the perspective of government. Sometimes that's through like an FTA or just, you know, if there's a barrier to, to market entry that, you know, our clients or, or companies have identified and they fly that to us and maybe through negotiations and certain channels, we can get that result. Uh, so that's how we, we operate, and it's good to see a lot of uh, very familiar faces up here, uh, London partners we work closely with, uh, Osborne and Clark, um, a lot of other people. So good to see that uh, everyone's doing well and, and staying healthy. Fantastic. Thanks, Hayden. All right, Susan Lindner, you are up next. All righty. Hi, everybody. Uh, sorry, my background is kind of chaotic, so um, I'm just going to leave it like this if that's okay. I'm Susan Lindner. I am the uh, founder and CEO of Emerging Media. We are a 20-year innovation storytelling consultancy. Um, for, I'd say, the first 15 years, we helped international startups make their mark on the U.S. market using brand, PR, marketing, and social media tactics to get about 10 companies acquired over the last 10 years. Um, now, over the last three years, I've shifted my focus and I spend most of my time as a professional speaker and workshop giver and soon um, author of the book, Innovation Storytelling, Get the Resources, Runway, and Recognition You Deserve. And that is largely targeting uh, chief innovation officers, heads of business lines, and product uh, marketers, and the PR and communications people who support them to help them get their innovations through their organizations. Most of you probably know most innovators are great at innovating, less great at talking about their innovation. And these are frameworks that I've built over the last 20 years to help them get their points across. Amazing, thanks Susan. All sure. right, uh, let's see, we have Kay Garcia. I don't know, there we go, hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, let's see if I can get the video to work. Um, well, I'll just go ahead. Um, uh, my name is Christina Garcia, and thank you for inviting me to this gathering. Um, I'm very happy to be here. I am uh, the managing director of the Berlin Business Office, which is um, an office that reports to the Berlin government, so the Senate for Economics, Energy, and uh, Public Enterprises. And um, my office opened uh, in mid-September last year, so it's relatively new. Um, my my uh, mission here in the United States is to um, invite uh, in potential investors over to Berlin, hopefully attract them to, to open a subsidiary. Uh, the second part of my mission is to help Berlin companies enter U.S. markets. I work with companies of all sizes. Um, but Berlin is also famous for its startup scene. So the third part of my mission is to market everything about that ecosystem. So uh, my, what, I, what I try to do here in the United States, of course, is to reach out to people like you, uh, like-minded people, and also to um, decision makers uh, to, to find companies that are actually interested in, um, in, in establishing some sort of presence in continental Europe or Germany specifically. So it's nice to meet you all. And um, I do recognize a lot of faces. So um, hopefully I'll get to know more of you as time goes on. Thank you. Perfect, thanks. May Cool? I'm sorry, I'm sorry I was muted. 
Um, yes, my, my name is Michael Lopez. Uh, if you read in Spanish, it makes more sense. I know that it's a little bit complicated when you read it in English. Yeah. yeah sorry about that. <laughs> no worries, no worries. I completely understand. Um, I am the Trade Commissioner of Costa Rica. Um, my organization is responsible for promoting Costa Rican companies to find business opportunities around the world. I'm based out of New York and responsible for supporting um, those companies that wanted to establish an operation either here or um, increase the, the volume of their sales in, in the U.S. So we, we work on go-to-market strategies to, to facilitate that. Um, we, we help Costa Rican companies find business opportunities through um, networking, through um, into, uh, commercial intelligence, um, and developing some sort of lead generation. Recently, we've been very active on on digital marketing, of course, because of what's been happening. We've been in the past very active lately, investing more in that. Um, we, we've been in, in the US for, for a couple of years already, for more than 10 years. And, and uh, the, the, the US is our main market. So we pretty much 40% of our business come to the US. So we, we have a strong dependency in both exports and foreign direct investment. So we take care. Um, we take care of a lot of that. Uh, my specialty is more uh, technology companies and advanced manufacturing companies. So I'm looking to to uh, network and, and learn more about um, business needs and, and 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 problems that might be in 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 any other industry in any vertical that might require um, some solvers, some some companies that that could that could support those requirements. Um, and of course helpers, um, help people that, that will be able to help the companies that we that we help and represent. Amazing. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate that. Um, okay, Jose, you're up next. All right, Jose, if you're speaking, we can't hear you because you're on mute. All right, there you are. There we are. Uh, Jose Rosselló from the trick. Sorry, my video is not working. Uh, I still don't know how how it works, but uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Jose Rosselló from the Trade Commission of Spain. This is the Trade and Economic Branch of the Spanish Embassy uh, here in the U.S. Uh, I work uh, as uh, at the tr at the Investment Department, so we usually handle with Spanish companies that are interested in coming to the U.S. and on the other side too, uh, U.S. firms that are interested in going to Europe. So we try to compete with other countries if uh, and see if they can set up in in Spain. Uh, <clears throat> We have also been working with Spanish startups with international growth, with uh, those startups that have already presence uh, abroad, meaning maybe Europe or Latin America. And we try to, to give them like a program uh, to uh, at least to learn a little bit more about the US market and how to uh, do business in the U.S. So I'm really, really uh, excited to learn more about your soft landing program. And thanks, Bing, uh, Bill, for letting me participate in the in the meeting. Amazing. Thanks, Jose. All right, Jeff Artis. Hello, Jeff. There you are. We can't hear you, Jeff. We see you up here, and I saw you unmuted, but we can't hear. There we go, connecting to audio. Okay. Give you a second. I feel like we need Jeopardy music or something, right? <laughs> All right, there you go, Hello. Jeff. Can, Alice, can you hear me now? We can, thanks, perfect. Sorry, I thought oh. that when I dialed in on the phone, the audio was automatic, but there was another, uh, another step, apparently. <laughs> So uh, my name is Jeff Artis. Thanks to Bill for uh, allowing me to, for inviting me today. And thanks to Alice. I love a good networking event, but with her control panel, she's actually making sure that we all meet everybody in the room, which you can't always guarantee. So that's terrific. 
Um, I delayed video as long as I could because in a shout out, shout out to Mark's quarantine beard, I've got my quarantine need a haircut very badly going on. I tried to order a Floby, but I didn't get in quick enough. They've shut their non-essential apparently, so they've shut down their factory in uh, in Texas. Um, but it's nice to see one or two one or two familiar faces. Um, apparently, you have captured the two Jeffreys in New England, who both do digital marketing. Uh, hello to Jeffrey Cohen. Um, I'm actually the business development director for a company called IBT Online. IBT stands for International Business and Technology, and we work with SME exporters to help them uh, build brand and drive export sales in overseas markets through website localization and international online marketing and e-commerce strategy. So uh, I'm very interested in, in meeting companies uh, or facilitators to introductions to companies uh, who are um, big enough to invest in developing their export strategy a little bit more and small enough that uh, they don't already do this uh, themselves. But uh, look forward to, to collaborating and speaking with everyone. Thanks for having me today. Right, thanks, Jeff. And we have Bernadette next. Hi. Hello, Bernadette. I too was holding out on the video for, not for the beard, uh, hopefully, but uh, <laughs> the bad hair, no makeup, you know, background noise. I'm expecting my mother at any minute who I moved in with me um, to bring me a snack because I'm quite hungry. <laughs> and pack up first. Um, so my name is Bernadette Fernandez. Um, I uh, am an entrepreneur um, in the realm of economic development. So I work with, um, you know, the triple helix of economic development. So I work with governments, I work with uh, academia, and I work with industry, mostly with governments and industry. With governments, I would... Um, help them with investment attraction. Um, I could also help them with export development. And in fact, I did both of those things with a New Brent or with the Canadian government uh, for about five years. And uh, most recently I did investment attraction for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Amazing. So, um, so both inbound and, and outbound, I guess. But with Pennsylvania, I actually held the office for the Commonwealth in Canada. So any companies that were looking at entering the U.S. market, I could talk to them and position and pitch uh, Pennsylvania as, as a place to um, either invest in Greenfield or establish a presence or sales and marketing, manufacturing, etc. Right now, I am working with uh, academia, which I don't get to do do very often, but we have, uh, uh, I don't know how many of you know about super clusters, but in Canada, we've identified uh, key industries that we are focusing in terms of investment from the Canadian government, as well as building an ecosystem. So I am uh, working with one of the super clusters called uh, Advanced Manufacturing. And I am uh, responsible to engage industry into that ecosystem so that you do have that triple helix of academia. So for the research and development, you also have uh, government for the funding uh, component and then, you know, industry collaborators. So various partners within industry. So Amazing. Thanks, Bernadette. Yeah. No <laughs> All right. I think that's actually, we got through everybody. So I think Bill and I are just going to go very briefly and then we'll move into a little bit more about soft landing partners. Then we'll have a featured member and a featured partner today. Uh, and then from there, we'll go on to everybody's opportunities or needs. So feel free to share anything you know about that might be valuable to our community during that period if you want to start thinking about that now. Uh, my name is Alice Chin. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Your Other Half. We're a human resources recruiting firm supporting businesses coming from outside the U.S. to the U.S. and helping them understand all the different levels of legal requirement um, with the tri-level government that most businesses haven't had to deal with and also dealing with very strange U.S. customs like employment-based health insurance that are just completely baffling to soft land partners. Um, so specifically focusing on businesses with two to 99 employees, um, generally funded in post-revenue companies. So that's what we do. And I'll pass it along to Bill to tell you a little bit about himself and soft land partners. Thanks, Bill. 
Well, thank you, Alice. Uh, kudos. To, I'm, a round of applause for Alice. This awesome facilitation. So, uh, or a round of applause. Sorry. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you. And, and it's, it, I have to say, listening to everybody's intros, I was just getting so excited. It's, you know, we sort of had this vision of getting this together and it's neat to see um, what it can be. And, and thank you all for uh, being a part of it. Obviously, this will be much better when we get together in person um, and, uh, and we're hopefully not, you know, too, too far away from that, but it's, it's, uh, that's fluid, I guess. Um, but for the moment, uh, we're, we're in, this, in this media. So uh, we have a company called Meet and we help international companies uh, in the B2B space exhibit at US trade shows. And that's our specialty. And uh, we've been really good at helping companies uh, market enter and scale quickly. Uh, and uh, particularly about uh, getting uh, uh, meetings with executives. And we end up doing uh, a variety of in-person marketing uh, type events uh, associated with that. So um, again, it's it's great to see you all here. I'm going to just take a moment and give a little bit of an overview of Softland Partners so that uh, for those that are, are new and most of us are new to this process, um, uh, that you, you have a little better, better sense of our formation and kind of where we're going. So we're formed around sort of the notion that um, many market entry companies uh, have challenges identifying uh, good resources when they enter a, a country, whether that's coming into the US or going to Europe or Asia or wherever they're going. Yes, and sir. these challenges often uh, uh -huh. not only cost a lot of money, cost a lot of time, but often uh, result in failure. And so um, our goal with Softland Partners is to really uh, eliminate or significantly reduce the friction between uh, companies entering a new market and finding best fit resources. Um, I am hearing just, uh, and maybe a few others are, it sounds like maybe one or two people still have their mics on. Um, so there is some feedback. If you do have your mic on, if you wouldn't mind. Um, or I'll go down the list and shut you off. Mute Jose there. Uh, okay, good. It looks like everybody else is good. Um, so just uh, so you know, uh, so our sort of purpose is to help international companies successfully enter and scale in new countries. Um, we kind of stand on uh, three pillars. Uh, one is maintaining win-win relationships, uh, providing exceptional service, and then finally being fair, honest, and ethical. And if you become a service provider on our platform, we actually ask you to, to agree to those standards. Um, and uh, I'll share just a little bit more about that at the end, and we'll have a follow-up email that will have more detail. But um, it's, you know, we, we have very little barrier to entry to being a part of this. Um, we want to be a very inclusive community. We want to build a, a real sense of um, the, the resources available in each marketplace. Um, and just so you all know, um, I think probably many of you are on our email list, so you see we're doing uh, currently uh, doing meetups in six cities, uh, New York, Boston, Hartford, uh, LA, London, uh, and uh, Mumbai. And it looks like we're pretty close to adding San Francisco and Amsterdam. So if you know other cities uh, where it would make sense for us to uh, start a chapter, uh, we are very open to that. We'd like to have 20 chapters going by year end. So um, we do have uh, two uh, what we call uh, spotlights today. Uh, we've got a featured member, uh, and that's going to be uh, it's actually probably Mark from Velocity Global. I think Jamie uh, said yes, but Mark, uh, he probably was volunteering you. Um, and hopefully he told you. Um, and so those are normally seven minutes. Mark, if you wouldn't mind keeping it to four minutes, kind of a, a little bit more of an overview of what you all do. And then we'll have Amrit uh, Kang uh, talk a little bit about London and partners, if we can, maybe in that four minutes. And I apologize, we've just uh, been a little long on, on the intro. So uh, Mark, are you uh, good to go on doing a- Sure. On Velocity Global? Very happy to. Um, I've prefer, prepared two or three slides just to help illustrate some of the, um, the chat that I'm gonna be giving. Um, so the main reason why I thought this would be interesting is because international PO is still a relatively new um, tool um, in the market expansion space. Um, so I thought I'd just give you a little more of an in-depth view on what that includes. So at its base, um, 
There you go. Um, international PO is essentially a means of hiring um, for companies that don't have existing corporate infrastructure in those new markets. And the emphasis is on compliantly hiring. The way in which it functions is that us, the PO provider, maintain a network of fully operational, um, fully licensed companies in all of the markets in which we operate, which uh, to date are 186, so pretty much all across the world. And what we do via the, that network of entities is hire our clients' employees on their behalf. So Velocity Global France or Spain or Germany or whatever would extend a, an employment contract between that Velocity Global entity and the individual that our client would want to hire essentially in that country and then pay out that, em, that, that employee via our local entity acting as a tax withholding agent, putting together benefits tax packages um, and doing all of the backend HR admin whilst providing the client in their home jurisdiction, which is typically a US company here, um, with a service contract and one point of billing in USD. Um, we then take on all of that admin and they continue to manage that employee on a day-to-day -day basis without having to worry about um, how to navigate the complexities of um, HR support in the market in question. Now, um, I understand that, whoops, um, a lot of you guys are, um, I'm just gonna try to get out of, there we go, here we go. Um, all of you, a lot of you guys are kind of regulatory background, a lot of you guys are government agencies. So um, many of you are probably considering, you know, what about private, permanent establishment risk? Is this legal? So I thought I'd take a very short minute to just explain the um, jurisdiction or the, the jurisprudential basis for this. And I apologize for those of you to whom this is um, not particularly interesting. So in the US, we've got a really well-established PEO industry. You probably all heard of the likes of Trinet, Insperity, uh, Oasis, um, that essentially do all of the payroll, act as a tax withholding agent, put together um, health insurance and other benefits packages for smaller companies that otherwise would have struggle, would, would struggle to put that together, uh, to, to provide that um, support internally. Um, that kind of, um, PO um, construct here in the US is called co-employment, whereby the PO provider and the end client uh, and the end employer kind of share liability for compliance support of that employee. Um, that is not um, mirrored elsewhere in the world, where we generally fall under either um, general employment law or um, contractor law. And examples of this are in Germany, where we fall under the Arbeitsnehmerüberlassungsgesetz, or in Italy, where we fall under uh, the law of Agenzia di Somministrazione. And I Apologize, I completely butchered that. Um, but essentially, um, what that means is that we have to take a case-by-case -case basis in how we can provide that compliant platform in each company, uh, country in which we operate. Um, and generally, uh, the way in which we do that is we maintain open channels of communications with the local government authorities, who um, in most cases see us as a positive, preferable alternative to misclassified independent contractors. Uh, the reason why they see us as preferable is that we have a legal presence in the country in question. So if that employee needs to turn around and sue, there's someone there to sue, i.e. us, when we feel that, that's part of our model. Um, we um, make sure that um, we act as a tax withholding agent, so all of the taxes due on employment for that individual are paid, and we also pay tax ourselves via our local entities. So all of those boxes are essentially ticked. And beyond that, we also actually have um, very active, positive relationships with lots of the FDI agencies of the countries in which we operate in. I've got a couple of examples here. Paris Région Entreprise, Toronto Global, Invest in Holland. Um, and they all see us as a partner to lower the hurdles to attract foreign direct investment because we make it so easy to um, hire an employee via our model. Um, all right, moving swiftly on. So the, the three different general use cases for which um, we use this for fast international expansion. Given that our entities are up and running, we can onboard employees in as little as 48 hours. Um, you guys will probably all know how onerous it is to set up a corporation in many jurisdictions. So, you know, we, we can be the difference between make, you know, being able to exploit a current opportunity or not. The second one is around the redic re reduction of risk with regards to international expansion. So we're often used as that tip of the spear to test the traction of your product or market in a, in a, in a new country before committing to setting up a company in your own right. Um, and the third one is around international M&A. So in those situations, it's with the transfer of employee populations um, on day zero of the transaction um, where the acquiring party doesn't necessarily have existing infrastructure in place on that day. So that's usually in spin-offs or carve-outs. I'm talking very fast, but I'm, I'm aware of the four-minute deadline. Um, so I'll end by giving you a couple of case studies. Um, one is a Datadog, 
Some of you may have heard, the, heard of them. They went public last year. Um, and essentially, we've been working with them since 2006, and they use international PO as their um, go-to-market strategy, essentially, to do exactly what I just explained, essentially. They'll put an initial country manager into a country, and over the course of, say, six months to a year, they'll put in place the, 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 the different um, channels, um, partnerships, et cetera, that they'll need to um, develop their product in that market. And only once they've got sufficient traction that they think this market is going to be a good good fit for them? Do they transfer and set up a company in their own right? Um, and we've done that with them um, for, I think, 300 plus, employee now, plus employees now in a number of countries. I think it's 40 odd countries. So that's an example of um, the, 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 you know, how companies use us to kind of mitigate that risk and to kind of repeat um, market entry um, strategies over, over, over a number of different countries. The second can, um, can I, use case- uh, Hey, Mark. Oh, sorry. Yes. Can I, maybe, if you don't mind, if we can truncate there and kind of go to your, your close, if you don't mind. That was, yeah, that was my last uh, oh, uh, cool. slide. So essentially, that was just a transaction. Um, HMD is a Nokia company, which I'm sure our Finnish colleague might have recognized. Um, but that was the second use case. It was uh, M&A. So I hope I was able to condense some fairly difficult legal concepts into <laughs> a short time frame, uh, but happy to take up any clarifying notes um, independently. Thank oh, you. that was awesome. It was totally awesome, uh, for sure. And one of the things, um, too, and just to encourage everybody, and I see lots of really good chat going on, and I'm sure some are, are chatting uh, privately as well, but we want to, it's really important uh, in this sort of virtual environment, and we don't get the benefit of sort of, uh, you know, being in a corner and chatting with someone individually, but please use all of the tools to uh, connect with people uh, in the, the private chat or the public chat, whatever. I do see the comments in the public chat about people with uh, coronavirus hair. I had hair when coronavirus started. So just this is, it's been brutal on me. Um, so no, just kidding. Um, my wife has never seen me with hair and we've been married 25 years. So uh, it's been a while. Um, so let me next go to Amrit Kang uh, to tell us a little bit about London and partners and Amrit. I'm sorry, we'll, we'll keep you to four minutes if that's okay. And just as you get going, I'll just let everybody know too, we we don't really have a time limit, so but we know folks will need to go at five. Um, but we're happy to hang out if people just want to chat about stuff. We're happy to do that. So, Amrit, the floor is yours. Thanks. Sorry, I don't have any fancy slides, so you're just going to have to look at me whilst I talk. Um, so, at London and Partners, we are the investment, trade, and promotional agency for London. So, the best way I like to describe us to people is we're like London's cheerleaders in everything that we do. So, our tourism arm sits with us. Um, we have our Study London arm that also sits with us that looks at um, overseas students who come into um, the universities in London and they're doing a lot of work on talent and retention. Then we have the business arm. Um, the business arm um, essentially was there to look at foreign direct investment, so inward investment coming into London. Um, and because of that wide outreach that we have, we have offices in China, India, North America, Germany, and France. Um, those offices are more satellite offices. Uh, London is our main hub. Um, and as, as an organization, we are a not-for-profit. So we're 51% funded by the Greater London Authority. So um, that is the Mayor of London's office. And the rest comes from funding with our commercial partners. Um, and, and as an organization, as I mentioned on the business side, as we've kind of grown over the years, uh, we noticed that um, there was great opportunity to help businesses within London. So we set up a program called the Business Growth Program, which was our three-month accelerator, which helps early stage businesses in London. Um, and where I sit and fit is what's called the Mayor's International Business Program. So that's helping companies who are scaling to internationalize. Um, Hence why I'm here in North America. It's one of our biggest markets where our companies internationalize into. Um, we have a set criteria. So companies have to have 10 or more employees, um, over a million in revenue, a 20% year on year growth rate, and um, hopefully some of them substantial amount of funding. Um, we've been running for four years. Um, we've looked after about 950 companies. Um, some you may know as like Monzo, Revolut, 
on Fido, uh, Nexus Studios that have, have successfully um, expanded. Um, we run a 12 month program, it's free. So um, again, because of where our funding comes from uh, part publicly, it is free for companies to join. And over those 12 months, we, we service the whole community um, of companies within the tech industry so we have different sector clusters um, that we look at so um, anything with creative tech to urban smart cities innovation fintech insure tech business services SaaS, you name it anything on tech that's innovative and fun and looks like it's gonna really do well we we back we get behind them we support them uh, the main part of um, uh, us is to do the international trade mission so we will take a select group of companies we will take them into market and give them the opportunity to meet with key collaborators investors corporates um, you know I can give you examples if anybody needs some of case studies and and wins um, it, it just reach out to me and, and, and let me know I'm, I'm more than happy to share those um, but as we are you know constrained in a, in a time of COVID-19 um, we're looking at smarter and creative ways to work so I am loving webinars it's it's keeping me going <laughs> it's keeping me sane because it keeps you in front of different people so we have turned to the wonderful world of webinars um, and we're doing a lot of our content virtually bill you're actually joining us next month for one which is going to be fantastic um i'll give you an example of a few we just did one recently with lloyd's bank we've got a few coming up with verizon 5g um some with microsoft so the the beautiful thing about before i moved to north america was i was reaching out to all these corporates and and i was getting nothing and as soon as i landed here and the shutdown happened everybody's messaging me back so I've, i'm starting to get um, um, in front of the people that I wanted to. So it's working out really well um, in, in that sense. Um, so if anybody's interested in some of the companies that I work with, I'm more than happy to share um, our new brochure. So we just took on uh, 60 new companies um, for March cohort, um, and they all fit the criteria as mentioned. I think that's my four minutes. Yay, nice job, Emirat. Uh, so great to, to hear what you all are up to and uh, you know, it's a great program for sure. Um, so thank you everybody. The, uh, you can, for those that were speaking, you can breathe now. That was uh, compressing <laughs> seven to four minutes is always fun. Um, so I'm gonna pass it back to Alice. Uh, she's got needs and opportunities. She'll talk a little bit about um, our meeting schedule from here on out and then I'll uh, have a couple uh, suggested actions and then we'll open the floor as well. So Alice, back to you. Amazing. So this is the section of our meeting that we hope really in some respects in some respects sets apart our group from other groups, right? We don't only wanna come and network and meet each other and develop relationships, which is obviously critically important to our community, but also be a place where we can come with needs and opportunities. So asks and offers is sometimes how we hear it said in another way, right? So that we have an opportunity to, to really enrich each other by seeing what we have in our network, what we've heard about, there is some kind of ambulance going on outside my house. So please ignore that if you are hearing that right now. Um, and, you know, and really make sure that this is a rich place where people feel like there are opportunities they can give and receive. So if you have an ask or an offer, please just unmute and kind of shout it out. Bill is my partner in crime here. So we will take notes and share these with folks afterwards. Some things that we've heard in the past are opportunities to share content or be on webinars, you know, to be on other people's live events. We've also heard things like different programs that people were hearing about. Uh, last time we were talking about small business loans <laughs> on this call, which might be a opportune and relevant for some people right now, but really thinking about the different opportunities and asks we have. So does anybody want to jump I'll in? I'll start with something. All right, Bill. So um, for those that don't know, and this is a shout out for Alice and Philip as well, uh, for those that don't know, we just launched a Softland Partners uh, podcast and Alice and Philip were uh, episode one and they talked about the New York meetup. So I'll share that in the follow-up. We just released it. I think what yesterday or two days ago. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and we've got a few other people up in queue, but if you uh, know, either want to be a guest on, it's called Softland Central. It's right now starting to aggregate out to all the, you know, different Spotify's and iTunes and all that. But uh, if you want to be on it or you know someone who would be really good 
Um, you know, we're, we're looking for all of the soft landing topics. There is not one that we will leave uh, un, un, unturned. I've got lined up uh, next week, I'm interviewing the head of the PwC Accelerator in Luxembourg. Uh, we're gonna kind of go all over the place. So we've got some, some great ones queued up, but please reach out to me on that. Amazing, thanks, Bill. Who else has an ask or offer? Um, Phil. Yeah, go ahead. All right. No, Shai raised her hand so nicely. I feel like she should go. Well, and so did Joan, but you, you unmuted first. So do it real quick, and then we'll go to Shai. Philip, did you do the actual hand? <laughs> Philip, then like, Shai, then Joan. I did it at the same time. I like unmuted and raised my hand. Um, so, so it's something somewhat similar to, to what Bill had just said, but it um, a, a slight variation. Um, one of the things that our organization is doing, and it was actually through a realization that I had in speaking with someone from the soft land partners group who had attended the meetup previously um you know we're, we're recognizing especially in the startup world that um the experience that we're going through is uh unlike no other but also um some of us don't even have context for other kinds of crises um and so we're actually looking to interview some people on um on their previous experience if they um had or uh worked for in or ran some kind of business during um any time that was difficult um and, and preferably globally difficult, um, and and learn and, and learn from you about about what your experience was, how you um, how you adjusted then, how you handled it then, and then and then what you're doing now. So if there's anybody who's interested in that, um, we're going to be doing some interviews. We're going to be turning it into content, and and we'd love to to have people who have some of that experience and background. Um, if you want to reach out to me about that, you can just add me on LinkedIn and shoot me a note. Um, that's the super easiest way. Um, but yeah, I'd love to offer that as an opportunity for some folks. Awesome. Thank you so much, Philip. Shai, you are up next. One day I'll figure out how to do that raise hand <laughs> thing. Um, so as I mentioned in my intro, we're developing a virtual accelerator program right now at NUMA. And I heard that many of you guys are either um, mentors at NUMA already or at other accelerators. And if you would like to be part of the virtual accelerator and would like to get more info about it, please reach out to me. Um, my email is shy, S-H-A-I dot T at Numa dot co. Amazing. Thanks, Shai. Joan, I saw your hand go up. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment, especially to Amrit. We had London and Partners do a webinar for our organization. It was actually Harrison Jones that presented. Not sure if you're aware of that. Uh, and he presented on the opportunities and issues to consider when expanding internationally to enter the US market. And we appreciated it very much. So just one example of how meeting someone through this organization um, has led us to some tangible actions already. Awesome, thanks so much, Joan. All right, so I do wanna acknowledge that it's 4.59. We're happy to continue this for uh, a little bit longer. So if folks want to stay and have other asks and offers, we'd love to hear them. But if folks need to jump because they have another call starting in one minute, we understand that as well. So just wanting to acknowledge the time. Anybody else have an ask or offer they wanna jump in and share with the group? Hi, this is Jabril. Hi, Jabril. Yes, um, so sorry for the no background noise, but uh, uh, so I don't know if it's uh, an ask or an opportunity, but we're distributing uh, a technical equipment to in for industrial companies. So open to and interested in distributing additional, uh, either uh, hardware, technical, you know, machinery or software. Uh, however, specifically for operational operations in industrial companies manufacturing. Uh, we're, uh, we have 14,000 companies as clients and, um, and marketing to 30,000 in the US. Uh, so that's the number one. And number two, we have a small showroom uh, in New York City and uh, interested in uh, adding more, uh, more products in the showroom. So that's, uh, I guess that's the opportunity and the ask. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you so much, Gabriel. We'll include that. Lance, you are up next. You're muted, my friend. Can you unmute? Oh, Bill has to unmute you. Okay. One second. There we go. Thank you. I think I should do it. Um, so, Jabril, if you're still there, I just wanted to give Jabril a shout out. It's one of maybe our early successes here. Um, so, anybody that's in advanced manufacturing, uh, Jabril and one of the companies that 
I think he's actually also invested in SESA Systems, um, invited me to a lean manufacturing uh, conference a few months ago, and we just placed an order for um, some beautiful workbenches and tables and other equipment that I'm looking forward to, I think Friday morning now, Jabril, will arrive in our new facility. Yes. And um, I just want to say thank you. It was an excellent collaboration. Everything went very smoothly. And I look forward to doing more business together. So anybody that's in advanced manufacturing, I heard a few names. Um, please keep that in mind. Thanks, and, and, I, and I should add, uh, so our current uh, X4 room is uh, small, but hopefully we'll have a very big one uh, much bigger one uh, soon, thanks to uh, yeah. thanks to Lance, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thanks, Gabriel. All right, Jeff is going to give us our final ask and offer, and then we'll talk about our next meeting. Jeff, to you. Jeff, are you there? Okay, it looks like you're unmuted, Jeff, but I can't hear you. Now we hear you, Jeff. There we go. Maybe. That sounded like your phone was moving or something. Okay. Well, Jeff, if you come back, we'll come back to you. We are going to be having these meetings the third Wednesday of every month at four o'clock at the same time, four o'clock Eastern time. And so you will get another Eventbrite invitation since you guys have already attended. We do plan to have these on the third Wednesday of every month going forward and would love for you all to join us. And hopefully at some point those will be in person and maybe we'll go a little later so we can all have drinks in the evening together. But until we can all meet in person again, we'll keep these at four o'clock on the third Wednesday of every month. I'm going to send it over to Bill to talk a little bit about what it means to be a Softland Partners member and how you can join. And then anybody who's interested in hanging around and kind of having some continuing chat, we'd love for you to stay. Thanks, Bill. Cool. Thanks uh, so much, Alice. Um, yeah, so, you know, this is all good and, and my goodness, it's fantastic to see you all. But where networking really happens is what we do after this meeting. So we strongly urge uh, everybody to uh, sort of pick one or two or three people to uh, meet with vir virtually, obviously, um, over the coming 30 days. Um, what will make us stronger is not necessarily having superficial relationships with 20, 30, 40, uh, you know, 100 people, but it's really having highly intimate relationships and, and building trust with a few. And from that, really being able to, uh, uh, to network much more effectively. But it's, it's trust that will drive the process. Um, and trust we don't create on a, on a Zoom call, unfortunately. Um, so, or on one Zoom call. So just to give you a, just a quick sense of our structure. So in terms of participation, we certainly are glad for all the guests that came today. We uh, open the doors to guests and you can come once uh, as a guest uh, into our process. Because we're looking to build a community, a trusted community, we want people to be somewhat committed to the process. Um, so you can join us in one of two ways, uh, or, or two ways, uh, either as a provider, which would be a service provider, those of us that are providing services to market entry companies or market, market exit companies, uh, and then uh, as a partner, and that would be more the folks who are in the international trade and investment uh, role, uh, whether they're working for a government or for uh, a um, uh, an industrial association or um, or something like that. Um, and so uh, either one is great uh, providers. It's $100 a year. So it's very low barrier to entry and uh, partners. It's free. We just want to put your logo up on the website so that we can uh, share that. And just so you have a quick sense, uh, both providers and partners have access to a, a private Slack channel, sort of a members only Slack channel. Um, and also, uh, we have a market entry marketplace, an online uh, marketplace that uh, also uh, everybody has profiles on. Uh, there's more, and we'll follow up with an email just so you have a little better sense of all the values. But uh, again, we're, we're really looking to build a committed community, uh, which is a key part of this. So um, with that, those are uh, kind of the topics we had for today. Um, we, as Alice said, we'll stay on and hang out and chat as long as folks want to. The last meeting, we probably stayed on another 15 or 20 minutes and talked about things related to COVID, um, and, but there's no, there's no bad topic. But is there something uh, that someone wanted to talk about? Maybe we'll go to Jeff first, if you can 
if your unmute works and see if you want to tell us your need or opportunity. I just unmuted you, Jeff. Do you want to try again? Uh, Jeff's not Jeff's not having any any uh, audio video luck today. So, um, Bill, can you hear me now? Oh, no, there you go. Cool. All right. Yes. Pay your that phone bill. The problem is I was uh, using computer audio for a while and then switched to phone and it was giving me fits. So <laughs> anyway, um, no, a, a, a little bit out of flow and I know some people have dropped off, but I just wanted to, uh, to let everyone know that um, we are running a pretty heavy series of um, webinars in April and May that may be useful to the companies that you're working with. Um, if you go to ibt.com, O N L, a little bit of an unusual domain name, but ibt.onl and look at webinars. Um, we typically do a cadence of a couple a month. Usually one is on a technical or strategic topic to do with digital marketing and the other is on a market, but we've uh, increased them now. We're doing some specific, one, specific ones with states, uh, but also have an extensive reference library of things, all free accessible to anyone that may be useful. So I encourage you to go to look if, uh, if you have someone that needs it or you've got some got a coffee break in your in your bunker there and you want to look at some neat infographics some things to see but really really nice to hear everybody's story and uh, look forward to further uh, correspondence cool Super. thanks, thanks Jeff. Jeff. are there other topics uh, that anyone wants to talk about share bits on anything that would be helpful I'm really interested if it's okay. Can I ask a question, Bill? I'd love to Please. hear. You're, how you're the facilitator. My God. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear how people are hearing from Softland partners who were, you know, about to do some kind of market entry, whether in the U.S. or somewhere else. And if they're kind of continuing those plans at this moment, if they're putting them on hold, or what are the things that we're hearing in this community? Because I've, I've heard a few different things, and I'm just kind of interested to hear what your experiences are, you know, whether it's through your accelerators or, or directly. This is the interactive part. I, yeah, <laughs> go ahead, Lance, yeah. Yeah, this is just no. open conversation. I don't need to call on people now. No, it's definitely a mixed bag. Um, some that are further along, I hope I'm unmuted, right? Yeah. yeah you're uh, good. Some that are um, further along, at least I've been advising clients to, at least this is my belief and maybe it's doubling down, um, during times like this, I think we all know that the companies that invest through a downturn or a crisis are the ones that usually emerge much stronger. So any clients that were far into it and had already been making any level of plans, I've um, advised them to continue on with those plans, maybe cautiously, but, but still proceed. The ones that were in really early stages, I think I have uh, generally been advising them to um, plan for a new normal, right? To, to think about what it becomes after, because this is not going to be a fever that breaks. It will be something new and something. Um, so those discussions have been a little trickier, um, which from my perspective, largely um, for the types of businesses I deal with, largely relies on digital transformations. It's fast tracking digital transformation. Companies that were not moving forward with their web strategies, e-commerce, they better get going on that really quickly. So it's probably those two, <clears throat> excuse me, baskets are from my perspective. Anybody else similar or? Uh, so yeah, similar. We're, uh, I mean, and based on a sample of two, <laughs> a sample size of two. <laughs> but uh, I, so one is um, had a small operation and had already planned to uh, to expand to, uh, in a larger uh, facility, or manufacturing facility. They're French, uh, and uh, already with a big machine coming from France. So that the, there was a delay in the in the shipping and so on of the machine, but uh, but, but it's uh, still uh, the, the plan remains the same, just with some with some delay. Another one uh, makes um, uh, they're called downdraft tables. Um, it's very it's kind of benches, but with uh, with, with the air suction for uh, typically for toxic fumes and and toxic uh, uh, dust um, as part of manufacturing processes. But and and their uh, their their main customer target in the U.S. or really in the world is is airspace and um, and automotive with two industries that are.
are completely uh, right now in a downturn, so and especially airspace. So uh, uh, interestingly, we were organizing webinars for them and marketed to our um, our database of 30,000 companies, and uh, we saw that there is a very big interest, uh, surprisingly, from uh, uh, from the food and the pharma. Uh, sector. So basically, we're the, we're seeing that that's kind of uh, led them to change their plans and um, not completely, but uh, see that they could actually continue uh, with U.S. market expansion, but targeting these other industries instead uh, and, and rethinking, just like Lance was saying, um, what that means for their strategy. Thanks. Oh, um, Any, yeah. yeah. One more mention. Um, a small company that we're working with, who's from Spain, um, they are um, stepping back from what they were doing and had decided to apply for a grant, an EU grant um, called InnoWave, which is funding EU companies uh, with a decent amount of money for their internationalization. So they can't do this, you know, back and forth right away, but they went back and applied for a grant. It's 80,000, uh, I forgot if it's 80,000 euro or 80,000 US, um, of which they'll put in some of that 20,000 and they'll be granted 60,000 um, to be used for paying all those sort of advisors that they need on this side, which is a great, a great thing to see. So they stepped back from what they thought was going to be, you know, more rapid, but now are, are using their time to fundraise, basically. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. All right. Anybody want to chat about anything else? No. Yes, maybe. Can I just say thank you before I go? So yeah. I have to run, but awesome. I mean, Alice, Bill, everybody, thank you. I have to run them. Thanks, Lance. Take good care. Hey, Lance. Same here. Thank you, and uh, see you next time. Thank you, Jabriel. Take care. Thank you. You too. Thanks, Aziz. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All right. Talk to. All right. Thanks, Sophie. Take care. Bye bye. Well, should we call it a meeting? It doesn't seem like there are other... I think we'll call it today. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. It was a pleasure. Have a wonderful evening, and we look forward to seeing you next month. Thanks, Alice. Thanks, Phil. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye now.